So tonight, I want to talk about hypothyroidism and its relationship with hyperprolactinemia. This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. Now, hyperprolactinemia is a condition in which your prolactin levels get high. Unfortunately, prolactin getting high can offset the wonderful functions of dopamine. Dopamine is responsible for the pleasure and reward centers of the brain. What are some things that can stimulate dopamine, you may ask? Hmm, I'd say the biggest one that we all enjoy as humans is probably sex. That's probably the biggest one that dopamine can uh, stimulate. Now, other things that can also uh, be stimulated by dopamine or vice versa, uh, shopping can, wonderful experiences can, being successful, anything that's a very pleasurable experience, yes, dopamine has a relationship with it. Now, in patients that have overt hypothyroidism, in other words, their TSH is high, their free T3, free T4s are getting low, and they're untreated. So say you got this patient I just described, that's a patient with overt hypothyroidism. Now, if they are overtly hypothyroid and they are going long-term being clinically untreated, this can lead to a condition called pituitary hyperplasia. Pituitary hyperplasia is a condition in which the pituitary enlarges and or mimics what would be called a pituitary adenoma. Now, this ultimately results in the increased production of prolactin. However, we don't typically see prolactin levels greater than 100 in these patients. The good news is, by introducing thyroid hormone replacement therapy, we can actually reverse this condition. Oftentimes, with the introduction of thyroid replacement hormone, the condition reverses and the patient will return to a normal pre overt hypothyroid state. Even in patients that have subclinical hypothyroidism, subclinical hypothyroidism is characterized by TSHs that are starting to crawl upward. However, a lot of uh, literature will say they're subclinically hypothyroid and you don't treat them if their TSH is greater than 10 or under 10. However, in the subclinically hypothyroid patient, TSH goes up, but free T3s and free T4s are staying within normal reference ranges. Yes, even in these subclinically hypothyroid patients, we can still see prolactin levels being elevated. However, they're not typically nearly as high as the prolactin levels would be in the long-term, untreated, overtly hypothyroid patient. Once again, if you were to introduce thyroid hormone replacement therapy to the subclinically hypothyroid patient, yes, you can get them back get their prolactin levels back to the treatment, to the normal ranges with the introduction of treatment. Now, hypothyroidism can even affect testosterone levels. In patients that are overtly hypothyroid, once again, the TSH is very high, free T3, free T4s are low, and even in the subclinically hypothyroid patients, hypogonadism can be an unfortunate finding in these patients. Furthermore, the degree of hypogonadism can actually be correlated with the degree of hypothyroidism. So if you got patients that are subclinically hypothyroid, the TSHs are under 10, free T3s, free T4s are normal, it can still induce hypogonadism. However, they may not be overtly hypogonadal. Furthermore, if you've got patients that are overtly hypothyroid, those patients can actually have overt hypogonadism. Once again, when you reintroduce thyroid hormone replacement therapy in these patients, you can get them back to a, a, a eugonadal state, as we like to call it. In summary, both overt and subclinical hypothyroidism can increase prolactin levels. However, these levels can be reversed with appropriate thyroid hormone replacement therapy. Two, hypothyroidism can induce hypogonadism. The good news is that this can be reversed with, once again, appropriate thyroid hormone replacement therapy, three. And lastly, both overt and subclinical hypothyroidism can affect pituitary release of gonadotropin-releasing hormones. 
Thus, hypothyroidism can reduce the release of FSH and LH. However, if the patient is being adequately treated with thyroid hormone replacement therapy, this can be reversed. If you appreciate the content we bring to this channel, check out the Amazon links in the description of this video. These are the links to the products we use, going from supplements, protein powder, pre, post, intra-workout, anti-aging cream, sunscreen, needles and syringes to inject, and so on. If you'd like to purchase one of those products, please use the direct link so that it will earn us a few cents as a tip, and you'll be guided directly to the products we recommend. Thanks in advance. All links should work on the US, Canadian, and UK Amazon stores.